Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and I've got an itchy eyebrow. And if I've done my editing job properly, you're currently watching me scratch my eyebrow in black and white. If I've forgotten, hey, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. As you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you have read any of it, the description. This is episode 46, oh my goodness, of my pick series. And I'm delighted to have someone new collabing with me. Well, I say someone new, we have collabed before, but it was in a group collab. This is the first time we've collabed one on one. And it's the wonderful Jonathan. So, if you want to find out exactly which picture he's chosen to influence our looks today, which palette or palettes I used, how well or otherwise they performed, and most importantly, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friends, you have the best seat in the house. Because as I've said, for some time now, and oft here echoed elsewhere in less imaginative places. But they don't have Sammy the Sloth straw to accompany them. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, you will have seen uh, from the intro that this is the latest in my pick series and today I'm collabing with someone new. I'm collabing with the fabulous Jonathan. Um, we have actually collabed together before but it was in a big group collab. It was the um, the Paulina palette where we did a, there was a, oh god there was a load of us um, that all used the Blush Tribe Paulina palette uh, to create a look and we all launched it at the same time and Paulina was completely blown off her feet because uh, we all loved Paulina and we all loved her palette. So, um, I shot a message across to him at the time saying if you'd like to join in on my pick series, I'd love to have you. Um, I don't know whether it went into others or what happened, but uh, it took him a little while, but he got back to me and said yes, he'd love to. So, here we are. As always, I gave him the option of choosing the first photo, and he said, no, you pick. So, whenever they say that, I always send across, you know, six or seven photos for them to choose from. If they don't like the first six or seven, then I'll send another few through instead. I've, I've got a folder with about 200 different images in. Every time I see something that I think, oh, that'll make a good pick, in it goes. And he chose this nebula, which is amazing. So because we collabed using Blush Tribe before, I thought I'd use Blush Tribe again, even though Blush Tribe are closing down. Salma, the lady that runs or owns Blush Tribe, is going to be starting. Oh, sorry, I've been up since half four again. Is going to be starting a new company. We don't know whether it's going to be makeup based, skincare based, hair based, what it's going to be. Um, but I've been told that my code that I've got which is BOMBER in all caps, will work for the new company as well. So I thought I'd bash out my Layla palette. This was a replacement for the Hasina palette, where she basically took everybody's favourite shades from all of the different palettes and put them together to create the rainbow palette. This is an all matte palette, which is awesome because it's so difficult at times trying to find an all 
matte, colourful palette. Because the majority of companies, when it comes to your purples, your blues and your greens, which are the most difficult to create, and reds to a certain extent, will cop out and make them shimmers, because those are so much easier. Not blush trying. So, this is still a teaching channel. As such, I work at a speed that beginners can keep up with me. I don't cut any blending out, I don't speed any blending up. That being the case, if you need to fast forward through it because I'm going too slowly for you and you just want to see the application and the finished look, there is a speed widget up there somewhere. Feel free to use it. Now, as part of the teaching channel, I noticed that people were saying they have hooded lids when they've actually got deep set eyes. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a minute. It's going to be very up close and personal, literally just my eyes on screen. So that you can see what I'm talking about. You can see what I'm talking you through. And I will talk you through how to work out whether you have deep set or hooded lids. Because they have the same issues in terms of how eyeshadow wears on them through the day but the workarounds for the application to get the best look to start with are very different. So if you've been following the hooded lid tutorials and wondering why you're still not getting the look you want, it might be because you've got deep set eyes. So, oh, I am so sorry. I don't know whether I'm going to cut the yawns out or not. So, here's your clip. At the other end of it, I'll be back to put some coloured pigment onto my lids. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's, it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over mm -hmm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes. So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid 
or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, and I am back. Right, I'm going to go in with quite a small blending brush. This is from a Voldemort Fee gift set, box set, where they annoyingly don't put any numbers on them. <sighs> um, but it's very similar in shape to the 562, as you can see. It's also similar to the 506. In fact, it might be closer to the 506. Alright then. I'm going to start by chucking some colour onto my lids and while I do that I will talk about Jonathan but first I'm going to explain that I'm going to be doing the Viennese Waltz of Blending Always hold your brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible These are stick-on nails, they're annoying the hell out of me because normally when I wear press-on nails I can get two weeks out before one pops off these have been popping off left, right and centre. I do not recommend the nails from W7 because they ain't going to want to stick. I've even tried roughing up the underside of them to see if it'll key the glue better. No. So what do I mean by a Viennese Waltz Blend? I mean natural turns towards the nose. A flicker when we get there and reverse turn to come back out again. The reason I do this is I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Skin on my eyelids moves. So if I was to just rely on the windscreen wiper, I would get telltale white stripes or barcoding or tiger striping. By doing circular movements, um, it just helps in terms of um, moving the lid around gently so that you're not stretching the lid but you are covering all of it. Okay, so I'm going to start off down here quite close to my natural crease. So, Jonathan, as I said, um, I first discovered him when we collabed together on the Paulina collaboration back in, I think it was September last year, so it's been a while. And uh, I loved his his style. He's he can do, you know, sort of work acceptable neutral looks 
But boy, can that man produce some editorial avant-garde, really, you know, out of the box looks. He is, he has real skills. Um, his channel is a bit of a smorgasbord because, as well as the makeup, he's got fashion, um, he's got vlogs, he's got um, fitness. So he covers a lot of different areas. Okay, I like this. I might add a. This is shade Istanbul. I'm just going to add in a little bit of sunset, which is a bit more of a traditional royal purple. Just to help deepen that up a fraction. I just want the combination of the two purples together. Because obviously in the nebula, you've got the bright red going down to orange and yellow. And then right in the middle of the nebula, there was pink and lilac. And obviously in the vertical thingy coming out, there was white with a bit of green on the edges. So I've got plenty of colour options. Now, there are only two rules when it comes to my pick series. You can only use colours that you see in the picture so for example I can't add a blue I can't add a brown um, could add black because obviously the sky is black but can't have a grey you know so you can only use colours in the picture and uh, you don't have to use all of the colours that's it. Super easy. Two rules. You can use one colour, two colour, all of the colours, as many as you like. Or as few as you like. This eyelid moves a lot more because it was pulled around when I was a kid at the ophthalmic hospital. So I do tend to get more fallout and I do have to work a bit harder this side just to make sure I've definitely got well you can see how much more this skin moves compared to the skin on the other eyelid I keep sitting back and checking that relaxing my brows and checking that I've got the same shape both sides because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical and unless you're like a certain Jimmy Chuck who based his whole career on a lie and continues to do so by photoshopping his results You may find you have to do two different shapes on your eyes to get them to look the same when you've got them open. Which I often find is the case with me. What you see with me is what you get and it's very much the same with uh, Jonathan as well. He is such a lovely guy and he's got the cutest little pussycat who's just turned one. So yeah, if you haven't seen him before, you are missing out because he is an absolute delight to watch. Just been watching one of his films where he went to the Five Below store and got back to his apartment to find random chickens wandering around the car park at the apartment block. Very confusing. <laughs> he didn't seem to know what was happening either, it'd be quite fair. Right, I'm going to clean my brush off on a washcloth. Um, I used to use a colour switch many, many moons ago, but they're far too harsh on the bristles of your brushes, especially natural hair brushes. I mean, this is a synthetic brush, obviously. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't advise using a colour switch. Anything is better. Using the leg of your jeans is better than using a colour switch, to be quite frank. Right, I'm going to continue using this smaller brush because whatever the head of the, of the brush, that's how far it will blend a colour out. And I, I want to have control about where the colours hit today. So I'm going to go into crimson. 
which you can probably guess is a true blood red. Look at that. Just going to tap off a little bit more. Um, I really don't mind if I get kick up, as you can see from hopefully that pan there, because I just leave the kick up loose on the top of the pan and then pick it back up again. At least if you've got a dusty pan you know you're picking pigment up without having to battle it. Now when you're going to blend two colours together it's always best to kind of start off half on the previous colour and half on your skin, because that way you get a nice seamless blend between the two. Now you can see I've got quite deep uh, lines just there so I do sometimes struggle because they go a bit dry. I do sometimes struggle getting pigment to apply but that went on without any problem at all. If you find when you're blending together like this, if you find the original colour buffs away, just finish buffing the edges of the colour you're putting on and then go pick up some more of your original colour and just reapply it. Alright, I'll do the same this side. I do like collabing with lots of different people on my channel. Um, partly to introduce you to creators that you may not find otherwise, but also because I find when I'm working in a collab with someone it kind of fires my creative juices up, shall we say, and just makes me want to play more with makeup and produce a really good look so I don't let them down even if it's my collab sorry now I've got the hiccups falling apart at the seams this morning folks oh dear a hiccup followed by a yawn fantastic but as I said it is very early and I have been up since half past four they've mucked hubby's schedule around this week. Normally he has Sunday's Monday off, which is great because Sunday we do stuff around the house and in the garden and then Monday we do food shopping, get that out of the way. Um, and then just come back and spend some time together. But he's having to work this Monday and again next Monday. She's got Saturday, Sunday off, which, although you'd think, oh, that's great, it's got the weekend. Mm, yeah, but it's so much easier to get stuff done on a Monday when everybody else is at work. Uh, right, I'm going to go into Flame, which is a lovely, bright orange. And again, gentle blending. Just to bring the colours together. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do on the lid. Decide whether to put another palette out and stick it. A, uh, a shimmer on the lid or not. You can see these these are blending so well together. This is why I really hope that when Selma starts her new company, it's still going to include makeup because the Hasina 2 that she released, which I have bought a backup for, 
is my absolute favourite palette. It's me in a palette. Um, but you can see how well these are blending without any issue at all. If you get a bit of shadow on your lid like that, just get a pad with a bit of micellar water on and just take it back off and then once it's dried down a little bit pop a bit of your eyeshadow primer back on like so right I'm going to go into I think Montana because I'm going to pick up on the pink that's in the middle of the nebula I mean, this is absolutely a look that you could recreate for Pride. There's no reason why you couldn't. It's certainly very colourful. Although, I'm not sure there's going to be many Pride events going on. With the whole lockdown stuff that's still going on over here although we can now meet in groups of six so lots and lots of tiny prides maybe and again just gentle blending I mean, you can see these are these are blending without any problem at all. You barely have to touch them to get them to blend, and that is the sign of a good shadow. Right, so I'm going to pick up on the fact that I've got the dark purple here, and I'm going to go into Islamabad. which is a lovely lilac shade because that will blend nicely with the pink as well as and the purple I've been doing this style quite a bit recently where I take the colour about two thirds of the way along and then bring this first colour down. I go through phases of what I like doing. Which, no doubt if you've been with me long enough you will know. But hopefully you're enjoying this and when you finish watching me and go across and watch Jonathan. I cannot wait to see his um, interpretation of the picture. I'm sure he's going to completely blow my look out of the water. No question whatsoever. <laughs> my Revolution Birds of a Feather palette because Layla doesn't have a white in it and this does so um, it's also got a really beautiful soft 
pinky champagne. I don't think it's the same shade of pink that I could get away with. Um, in uh, the picture. So I'll be breaking my own rolls. Right, I'm going to grab a Jeffrey Voldemorphy lip brush, JS24. I like it because with that point I can get right down into the corner there. Now obviously because I'm putting matte shadows on I'm not going to wet them so I'm expecting hella fallout. Now I've not used this white in this palette so I genuinely have no idea how good it is or otherwise. I'm just going to pack some pigment onto both sides of this brush and then start applying now whites can be very very chalky and very very dusty And you can get hella full out as I'm getting right now. I'm wondering if it's worth wetting the brush. I think I might do. I'm going to grab my um, cucumber spray from iHeartRev. You can use any liquid. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. You can use a setting spray, a finishing spray, a priming spray. You can even save an empty spray bottle and just put fresh water in it each day. But you should always remember never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment and always dry your ferrule off. So I'll put pigment on it, wet both sides. Easiest way to dry this ferrule is stick it in your knuckles and spin. Otherwise if you let moisture get down here, it loosens the glue, all your bristles fall out and you haven't got a brush, you've got a stick. Yeah, see, not all mats like being wet. I think this is one of the ones that doesn't like it. But, what's going on? That's the main thing. Dry brush. A bit more pigment on. See, this is, I always leave my, no I don't like that, in, so that you can see, not even I get it right every single time. Pop a bit of eye primer on. And yes, I apply it with a flat brush and then blend it with a fluffy one to get any excess off. Right. 
instead of going in with the white, I'm going to go in with the gold instead, which is the Fiesta. And it's kind of a, a greeny gold, so it's going to pick up on the white stripe that comes up out of the centre of the nebula. has got like a yellowy greeny edge to it. So I'm going to use that instead. better. This fiesta is actually almost like a cream. Um, it feels like a like a super shock shadow almost. Because I did not wet that. Oh, that's gone on really nicely. This is absolutely a cream. Cream to powder. Now, with my other eye, I do have to stretch the lid out. I always tell you, don't do that, you'll damage it. And unfortunately mine was damaged when I was like five years old. So if I don't do this, what happens is the pigment builds up loosely in that crease and then falls down into my eye during the day. So you can see the creasing that I've got there. You can even see some of the white striping that I was talking about. So it's about the width of that now, so I allow the same width again and then I put my finger on there and gently stretch the lid out just far enough to straighten out that crease. So I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll, just enough to straighten the crease and get that blended on and then instead of just letting go I'm gently putting the lid back and then do the rest of the lid the same way that I did on oh, the eye that I do see with. I didn't realise that this was a cream shadow. It's really, really lovely. If I show you the texture, you can see it is definitely a cream. Which is great because then you don't have to wet it and you don't get a huge amount of fallout either. Okay, so far, so good. Uh, I'm going to just pause this now while I go and put some foundation and other base products on and then I will be back with you to finish off the eye look. Now, clearly, I've got a little bit of time before I'm going to be able to chat to you again but for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely instant. So, um, hi. Hey, my lovelies, I am back. Did my usual where I soaked the brows up and then used Istanbul, the first of the purples that I used there, just to go through the brow on a brow brush. Uh, the beauty of doing that, I always use the soap dry, I don't wet the soap, um, which means it's slightly sticky. So the powder has something to stick to and the powder then sets the soap brow into place that lasts longer during the day. So 
win-win. So I'm going to dip into a mixture of Istanbul and Sunset because that's what we used here. And I'm going to use that just to go along the lower lash line because regular viewers will know if I put anything in my waterline it's Niagara Falls time because I've always had watery eyes. Add to that one of my fibrous symptoms is watery eyes. Add to that hay fever and yeah. So I always end up doing something like this along the lower lash line just to finish the eye off. It's frustrating because I, I see such gorgeous looks with like neon water lines and I just think, oh, I wish I could do that, it looks amazing, but I just know there's no point. Um, and I'm going to dip into, now this is my Tarte Graveyard Girl brush. Flat topped and chunky. Best brush ever for getting up under your lower lashes and smudging out. Uh, but you can just use an ordinary chubby brush, stubby brush. Uh, blender, you know, so I'm dipping into Islamabad, which is the lilac that I used here. I'm just using that to blend out the lower lash line. I was tempted to put a wing liner in, um, you'll see when I come back whether I've done that or not. I haven't decided yet. Surfer highlighter from Kaleidos. I got the email today that my um, birthday present from my hubby, belated birthday present because there was nothing I wanted when my birthday was there. So he's bought me the new Kaleidos um, palette and one of the new highlighters. I got the dispatch notification today, so ooh, fingers crossed. Right, this is just a cheap lip brush that I bought off eBay well over a decade ago now. But it's great for getting up under your lower lash line. Lower lash line? Tail of your brow. I've got lower lash line on my brain today, haven't I? And also your inner corner. Now I like to bring mine along under the tear duct and just blend it in with whatever colour I've run underneath my eye just to help for me anyway, finish the look. I just think that works really well with my eye shape. Right my lovelies, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to chuck some more of this highlighter on, some mascara, a lippy. I may or may not do a wing liner, who knows. Um, and I'll be back with my finished look, so uh, please don't go anywhere. I am back. As you can see, I did the wing liner. I have got a mini tutorial on doing wing liner. If you wanted to watch that, um, I used the Revolution Renaissance Flick. I love this. This is one of the best liners. I like it so much. I bought it in brown and in blue as well. And if they bring out any more colours, well, I'll probably buy it in those. It's a felt tip pen, but it's super, super easy to control. Great, super easy to get fine point as well. I used my It's Superhero uh, Deluxe Size Sample Mascara. Uh, my finished my Rose Gerard Slay All Day, finally. That seemed like it took forever. I'm now on to the Rich Lux Dreamsicle one, which is amazing, I smell like an ice cream right now. Uh, the lipstick I used is from We Makeup, the Italian brand in shade 
oh ooh. so this my darlings is my final look inspired by this picture how do you think I've done hmm? what do you reckon If you were collabing with me, which colours draw you in that? Which ones would you be drawn to first? Would you do something like me or would you do something a little bit more subtle? Let me know. I'd really be interested. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you. But rather cheekily, they are leaving me in your newsfeed so it is not obvious that you have been unsubscribed once you've done that and checked your notification setting given me a like, given me a comment and maybe even a cheeky little share I'm going to need you to go across to the fabulous Jonathan and check out his look and see just exactly how he was inspired to recreate the picture on his face. I have to admit, while you're watching me, I'm going to be thoroughly enjoying watching him and thinking, why didn't I do that? Because so far, in all 46 episodes, there's only been, I think, two looks that were similar. And even those were different enough that they were different. So, yay. If you are here from Jonathan's channel, or you've tripped over this film by complete accident, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something you liked. Even if it was just me waffling and desperately trying to hide yawns. And the fact that I put the fan on halfway through and haven't mentioned it, because south-facing kitchen ridiculously hot already it would be awesome now you've watched this if you too would like to join the 4F Beauty family we are by far the nicest channel on YouTube and the nicest family on YouTube super easy all you have to do is click that red subscribe button and turn it grey and then ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications and keep saying yes and all of them and yes and all of them until YouTube stop asking you the same damn question in a different way. And then hopefully they'll send you, oh I don't know, maybe one in four of my films that I actually release. Speaking of which, there are an awful lot of other films you can watch. I mean, there's the preceding 45 episodes of this particular series, for a start. Um, I've got a lot of different things you can watch. I've got product reviews, I've got collabs, I've got challenges, tags. I even read you my favourite poem. So you're bound to find something that interests you. That being said... As I've said for some time now, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and just have some me time and indulge. What better way to pass the time? Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is your stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.